There's power in a drum beat on a hill above the sea. Power in the voice of a supporter. But it all amounts to nothing. Together we don't sing. There's power in one one. Lord, boy, and sea. Yes, he lord or forever. Someday, North County. Yes, into our lands. Get back on you and me. All our voices strong together. As we cheer on our team. There is power in one one. Lord, boy, 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 sea. So, March 7th is, uh, every time I look at my calendar, it's like, okay, today is the 19th, and we're three days away from what will be a month out from our first preseason game, which will be a trial run for a lot of us. There's a hundred things going on at the same time, but it's also like a drug I can't stop. You know, it's like, I, I'm like, it's like two in the morning, and I wake up to pee, and I, and I go to the bathroom, and I come back, and I'm like, and I'm like, on my phone, like, jotting notes down, and I'm like, okay, I gotta get back to sleep. I have work at seven, I have to, you know, too much going on, but it's energetic um, in a way that I've been invigorated with soccer before, but never like this. This is a completely different level. Gosh, it's only six weeks away. Holy smokes. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm excited because it's, it's a brand new start for us, and it's something that we as a city have been wanting for a long time is to have, you know, this, this professional men's league, something we can call our own. We have such a great group of fans here, so I have no doubt that we're going to show up for the opening game and, and, and really, you know, bring a crowd and, and make it loud and have a great time. There's still so much to do, but I'm so excited about it. You know, we gotta buy a drum. We, we gotta start coming up with songs. Having drum circles. Um, organizing events and getting everyone their merch and their scarves and their member packages. Seeing them wear the gear that we created. We've got some friendlies to go witness. Watch parties, going to uh, as many events as possible, creating as many events as possible. Um, I think we're gonna have a pretty epic tailgate experience. I'm looking forward to a march. We were talking about how we're timing that and whether or not we'll be marching into that stadium next to our players. Start thinking about the first TIFO and um, what are we gonna do for the first away trip to Orange County? We're gonna do a bus and let's organize that. There's just event after event after event that's gonna start happening. There are going to be a lot of very talented and busy people stepping up their game even more than they already have to be ready for that and that's that's scary and exciting at the same time. It's gonna be fucking awesome. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Nailing down all the final details of all of those events and, and those little things. I mean, it's a lot to do, but I'm fully confident we'll be able to accomplish that and have a really, really great opening game. I'm so excited to show the loyal what we're gonna bring to the game atmosphere. Uh, I'm gonna, gonna say it's gonna be impressive. There's power in a drum beat on a hill above the sea. Power in the voice of a supporter. But it all amounts to nothing. From the north came up a heart full of hope Stowing on the good ship Santa Rosa On a plank line down the gangway New Jets moving by the shore San Diego's looking mighty fine, sir Sun shining brightly The ocean fine and blue Found him a good friend in all Rosu The people on this booming of seaside town Welcome to the name one of their own The long arm across the sea The building of the hook of the The parades and brigades of the firemen Cheer the hearts of young and poor With his adventures playing the sea You have to question Stone Brewery's knowledge of soccer culture because they said, oh yeah, we're going to host the event. And everybody's like, great, we'll all go down there and, and we'll pay plenty of good money for Stone Brew. Of course we will. And then they throw in the caveat of, oh yeah, we're going to try to encourage people to show up. So we will, we'll give you, we're going to give away a beer to everybody there for every goal. And we all went, huh, well, that'll, that'll, all right, that'll cut into my grand total. That'll be fine. And then the boys proceed to have one of the best offensive performances. I think the best. I could be wrong here, but I think it's the best offensive performance of the season. Uh, maybe not the most important offensive performance. We had you know, the hat tricks that come later in the season. But, but at that point, we didn't know who we were really as a club. And we didn't know 
who they were. I mean, we knew who Reno was. We knew they, how far they, how deep they had gone into the playoffs. We knew what was going on there. And the boys just proceed to just pepper the net. It's just beautiful. They're putting goals in. They're, they're scoring goals faster than, brew, than Stone Brewery can get these little half pint samplers out to everybody. They're just, and they're bringing out trays. First they had one poor waitress there and then the waitress and then, and our friend Liz who was coordinating all this is there. And then we've got like, at one point, four or five waiters coming in in like a two minute rotation with trays of beer and they still, they can't keep up. And, and it's flowing. Well, I mean, I, I wrote a, we wrote a really good supporter song that day. I don't know if we're ever going to use it, but we wrote a good one, kind of a Beatles theme song. Uh, and we had a really good, fun, you know, build the culture kind of an event. And, you know, taught ourselves a little bit about who we were, but definitely taught Stone a little bit about who they were dealing with. Finding somewhere to paint is always, always a massive challenge because you need a big, you need as big of a space as possible. Um, but you can't just go to some parking lot because if the cops show up or security shows up, you got to leave. And if your paint's wet, you can't just leave. It's not that easy. So you got to find somewhere that you can really paint at. Um, so at the time we had been talking to a couple breweries about partnerships for our members and uh, we had talked to Second Chance, Second Chance Brewing, and they said, yeah, come on over. You know, you can paint in our warehouse, that's no problem. And they gave us the perfect space to paint in. And we started talking about the, you know, first match TIFO and uh, a long time before the match, obviously. We have to keep it simple, we have to keep it something that is going to be easy to paint, make it represent us, and let's put a message out there. What, what is the group about? And for us, it was trying to find something that struck that balance of uh, timeless, something that could stand on its own as being a work of art, not just for that one game, but for any game, uh, and representing the group in that way, but also that moment and what it meant to us. My, my perspective, and I think everybody's perspective, was go big or go home. So I was uh, sitting at my day job, um, avoiding actual work, with a two or three stacks of post-it notes, and I'd gone through at least one full stack, figuring it was going to be roughly the TIFO was going to be roughly square. So I'm sketching up little ideas, um, you know, a lot of them bum-centric, and trying to figure out something. Ranked them in order of, of badness, and uh, pulled the one off the the, the bottom, and uh, it was a you know forever loyal, owned by no one, big bum in the middle. My first reaction was, it's simple, but it's perfect. It's, it represents who we are, um, we're forever loyal, and we're owned by no one. Which is a statement in itself that came from a, a picture and kind of a diatribe of Bum the dog and that he was owned by no one. Such a good message and a clear message to everybody of like, hey, we're here, but we're here because we want to be. For us, that's really what it meant, is that this is ours and that it can never be um, removed. And by ours, it's the collective we. It's not me, it's not you, but it's we. And so that's what it meant. Seeing that first dash of paint go on there was like, wow, this is amazing. Uh, the TIFO was, as big as it was, was incredibly simple. It was a, it was a well-traced out design that we did in Kim D's backyard. It was lots of crawling around on your hands and knees like any TIFO is, but it was more than that. It was a good opportunity to bring together all of the people involved in leadership that were motivated. We had all kinds of guests that came in and helped us out. That was, again, another layer of the onion of, the, of creating that bond. Those are always fun social events. March 7th is a, a, a cornerstone of which a new building is being formed. And so in that, it's exciting. It's also a little bit of nerves to make sure we lay it in just right. For me, it's really exciting to know that we're going to have that first opportunity to show what San Diego can do and what San Diego is about. I think in terms of noise level, I think it's going to be great. I'm expecting big things from our local support group section, and I want everybody else in the stadium to see our section there um, behind the goal and just be like, what is that? I want to be a part of it. Or, or be able to have everybody else in the crowd feed off of our energy. So I'm looking forward to it. The fact that we get to show not just San Diego and not just USL League, but the entire world, really, that we are here and we are a soccer town, we are a soccer city, that's going to be really great. And so what I hope March 7th is, is the beginning of the reclamation 
of our sporting culture. And that it continues through the Padre season and it continues through whoever else's season, but as fans, it's us taking back our teams and saying, from now on, we will drive the narrative with these clubs as opposed to the other way around. I'm the director of operations. Four hours before we'll get set up, three hours before the, the event will open up. We'll have beer, we'll have soda, we'll have water. Uh, we're doing some tacos. After that, about an hour before the game starts, we'll start getting everybody lined up for the march. We'll, you know, and then what, we're, it's really cool here uh, because of the unique situation where the locker rooms aren't connected to the stadium. The people that go on the march will march up to a certain point and stop and then we will have uh, an area where we'll have a capo leading the cheers, and then the players will come out, both from the loyal and from our enemy, and we will uh, greet them appropriately, depending on where they're from. And so that's going to be a really unique experience. Yeah, so, you know, showing up really early, I remember riding uh, a, a shuttle bus with the, uh, with the event security guys around USD and they were like, oh, what are you, what are you doing here? Where do you work? And I was like, oh, I'm, I'm with, you know, I'm with the SG, we're doing our setup. And then one guy goes, oh, I'm the, I'm the gay guy at the setup. He's like, you're gonna have a whole bunch of people there. And I was like, yeah, I, I'm expecting hundreds of people there. And he's like, oh, really? Hundreds for, for a pregame? I go, yeah, th there's a lot of hype here. This, this is a big deal. There's going to be a crowd in that lot. He was like, should we have more than one security guard? I go, nah, you're not gonna need any security guards. But eventually there was like three or four over there, so they were smarter about that than I was. Bums Barking Lot, uh, <laughs> that, <laughs> that name still cracks me up. Uh, but that process was a difficult one, you know, trying to figure out how uh, we were going to create an experience for people coming in. The machinations of USD and this idea that we started talking about, we, called it, we, we kept referring to it as partying at grandma's house an ideal game day experience and the USD's ideal game day experience are so different. We, as, as a supporters group with experience with supporters group, we knew what we were looking for in a tailgate, a pregame. We knew what we were looking for in regard to a march in, in regard to a game day experience. We had in our mind a lot of things. But USD poses unique problems in that they're a private school and they get to they, they get to call the shots. The uh, the hot topic was always we want people to have a place to tailgate and gather before the game to assemble before the game because it, it makes such a huge visual impact and also just a personal impact to be able to have that time to a assemble before the game um, talk get get fired up before a game with people that, that are like-minded. So yeah, I saw the chant you guys got online and everything. Listen to them this morning. Oh, cool. Ready to get going. It's going to be good. And for people that were maybe even just passing by to go to the game, if they saw us and said, hey, I want to be over there and hang out with those people, uh, they look like they're having fun. And that's kind of what we wanted to create. <laughs> to me, that's the best possible way to create long-term friendships with people um, within this kind of culture. And to me, it was really important that we have a tailgate to do that, to be able to have some beers and to share, a, especially in San Diego, to share a couple of craft beers with people uh, and bring people and introduce them to each other. And it was all about building those relationships. So I will shout out specifically the club and Ricardo for for fighting for us, for pushing for us, because uh, if it if it wasn't for him or the club in general, um, we would have we wouldn't have had any of that. But it's good to know that we have a relationship, uh, not just with the club, but the the school understands that we're not there to destroy their school. We want to respect um, what they've built there. We want to respect their rules and other people's safety. Um, but we also want to make sure that people that go there have a good time, and that the people that first come in contact with the locals um, really feel like it's something that they want to be a part of every game.
it felt like a movie premiere or something like that where, you know, all the big people are out or all the people that you uh, had seen at every soccer bar or everything. You know, I specifically remember standing in, in the middle of the, of the tailgate and looking around and saying, like, six months ago, where were we? And now look where we are. Like, we're here. We have merch. We have gear. We have scarves. We have people. We have a family that we're forming here. One of the things that I'm really proud of with the supporter group is the fact that we, we try to be different from others, other supporter groups and what they do. We don't look at our players and our, our FO as just staff and just club people. We see them as, as, a, as actual human beings, as brothers and sisters. And so when the idea came up uh, where I believe it was Steve, said, hey, I want to write a letter to tell these people that are in the front office and the players and the staff, I want them to know what this means to us. I had, I had been reminiscing a lot, and it had been an emotional couple weeks for me. My son was born February 8th, so it, it had been less than a month between my son being born and the first home opener. Um, and I thought a lot about what it meant that this was coming up, right? I mean as a soccer supporter and somebody who's wanted this in San Diego for so long, not only just wanted it, but had been fighting for it for so long, I wanted to convey how much this meant to us supporters, to the players themselves. I want them to understand, because they haven't been here through everything that we've been doing, and I want them to understand the human side of this and what this actually means to us. This isn't just a soccer game. So we kind of surprised the players and the staff with a letter uh, written from us, uh, kind of just expressing our, our kind of feelings and emotions about today. Uh, you never really make a, make a place a home until you have a family, so we wanted to welcome them to our family. I'm an engineer and I don't consider myself very good with words. That, that kind of flowed. Um, I, I don't think that, that didn't take me very long to write. Uh, and, and I sent it to Drew first and foremost, and he kind of looked it over and he said, usually I'd have suggestions, but I, I don't think that this should be touched. And I said this, I said it to the rest of the leadership and um, there were a lot of reactions. I remember Kim specifically was like, I just cried, like this is so good. Um, this is exactly like representative of what we, what we have to say, so. Nobody said, nah, that's not a good idea. You're gonna, you know, you, you might uh, put too much pressure on the players or this and that. No, it was like, yes, they need to know what this means. They might have been waiting for this day for six months after being signed or maybe less, but we've been waiting for this day for years. Oh, another thing that I really was really important to me was um, to acknowledge everybody's history. So we, we did uh, the letter in English that I wrote and then Jerry helped me translate it to Spanish. We even had a, um, a French version for Beverly. Yeah, it was, it was a cool moment to kind of have access in the locker room too be able to go on there and fold up the scarves and put the letters in and be, and we did like little name tags so that you know it was kind of personalized um, to kind of make it so that you know this was something that was important to us. For me it was that moment and being there and like it felt it was only 15 20 minutes it felt like it was like an hour and that, like two hours in there just soaking up that moment and knowing that they would be in there in a moment I didn't see them come in and we, we left kind of like little elves uh, in the night. I was really proud of those moments. I was really proud of the ability to go in there and, and uh, personalize those. And, and I hope it meant a lot to the players. Um, the sentiment meant a lot to me to be able to do that. Um, so I was, uh, I was kind of honored to be able to be in there. We had brought the drums and we we're trying to figure out how we were going to lead this thing. It was kind of put together last minute of you're going to be over here, you're going to go over there. And I, if I remember correctly, I actually said, I'll do it. I'll lead the, I'll lead the, the march. Um, and everybody was like, yeah, you'd lead it. <laughs> you do it.
I did say that this was history, that we were making history together, that to not forget that and to take it all in because it was the first time we were gonna get to do this ever. This is the first ever game. You guys are a part of history. This is huge. What does that mean? You guys have a responsibility to be loud and lose your voice. I'm losing it. You better lose it too, you got me? And I think that was what I was kind of trying to tell myself. So I said it out loud so that everybody maybe got a sense of what I felt that day as well. And looking back at it and all the videos and everything, it goes, wow, that really did work actually pretty well. Like, it could have gone wrong so many different ways. When it all got said and done, we were all up there kind of gathered, waiting for the team to walk by. But it was 20 deep, you know, elbow to elbow, shoulder to shoulder, loud and proud. And I remember the other team coming out of Vegas and we've given them some stick as they went by. And I remember like, I remember when all the kind of like came around the corner and looked up and saw this huge crowd and went and like, had like a moment of like, uh, and then he like put his Wijnaldum face on, like, ah, and then it became, you know, the Eric Wijnaldum that we know, but, but I, I remember like, I wouldn't say I looked him in the eyes, but I was looking right at him when he came around that corner and, and his reaction to that crowd, I was like, oh yeah, the mind games begin. Landon was walking out and he looked at me and he just gave me like this look, like, because I had just seen him kind of behind the scenes in the locker room and he just kind of looked at me like, here we go. Like, this is now becoming real. It's an hour before the match. Uh, they're going out to actually warm up as a team that wears San Diego on their shirts, this professional soccer team representing San Diego. Carrie went by. I remember her reaching out and grabbing my hand and looking at me and being like, oh, yeah. And like, I have another, like, just a little quick flash of a moment, like, yes, here we go. And then they, they open the gate, the floodgates, and the crowd marches in. <laughs> little, little side note here. I, uh, they were very clear with us about rules at Grandma's house. Beers are okay in the tailgate. You can get to the stadium, buy beers when you get there, but you can't bring them between the two. Which we were like, everybody knew that. I remember and Steve giving me a hard time at that moment being like, you, you heard that, right? And I was like, yeah, 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 I got you. And so as they all went through and everybody's kind of scattered through, as I marked into the stadium, uh, Warren was standing there with Ricardo right at the gate, and I was like, hey, what's going on, guys? And Warren was had a beer in his head, a can of beer in his hand, and he said, I can't remember what he said to me, but he was like really excited about catching up with the group, and so he like handed me this beer, and then I, I just thought, oh, I'm taking a drink and giving it back to Warren, which is something inconceivable in, you know, in November of 2020, was totally normal in March of 2020. He hands me, he hands me the beer, I take a sip, I turn around to say something to Ricardo, and Warren turns around and takes off. And so now I'm standing there, about to walk out of the stadium with a beer in my hand, and Ricardo's looking at me and he goes, you, uh, you, you can't bring that in here. And I was like, I, I know, what am I gonna do? And before I can say anything, a security guard walks up and he says, uh, no outside containers. And I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna get kicked out before this even gets going. And I remember like, uh, 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 tilting it you know, as fast as I could and then putting it in a trash can and being like, that wasn't my beer, it wasn't my beer, it wasn't my beer. And Ricardo's looking at me like, and he watched it happen and he was still like, you know better, Tom. And I was like, oh God. So you know, let, me, let me march through it into down to an area. I didn't march all the way to the, to the uh, down into the seats with that first group. We, we kind of came down to the stairs and then we all stopped. And then I realized that all these people walked past me to go into this section. This is when I need to go back to the beer line. So I turned around and went back and got my bracelet and, and did that. But yeah, so I, I remember marking, walking down into the seats and the first thing I said to Steve was, I just got caught with a beer in my hand. And he was like, what? I go, but it was Warren's beer. And he's like, what? And I go, we didn't have, in the inter time of the energy of the moment, didn't really explain to him right then and there why that had all happened. But he's looking at me and he's like, dude, we talked about this. And I was like, I know, I know. It's like the first 60 seconds at grandma's house and we've already broken one of the cardinal rules that we swore we wouldn't do. It's like, ah. It is approximately 6.30. We're drinking our first stadium beers. We're down in 109, loud and proud, getting warmed up. Going through a couple of our practice, so everybody's on the same page, getting our energy flowing, ready to do this. Incredible scene here at U.S. Teatro Stadium for the U.S.L. Opener between the Las Vegas Knights and the San Diego Loyal. Our San Diego Loyal. It is fantastic right now. This is this is what it's about. This is soccer right now. So I am so excited. We are San Diego. I'm feeling 
excited, dude. This is crazy. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, all this hard work. Uh, it feels so good to be here, man. This is this is gnarly. This is gnarly. It's it's crazy to see all the scarves we worked so hard to get, all the memberships we've taken. You know, it's cool. I am beyond words. I can't even put it together right now. And to have this guy right here, my favorite human. Along with Elias, his brother, but to have Diego here with me is the biggest thing ever. So, for us, like finally being able to get this, be here for our first home match is ridiculous. You've been there from the beginning, and now you see this, it's, it's beyond, I don't even have the words. So, I, at the uh, our um, tailgate, uh, I was stressed just knowing that. Um, you know, we had loaded everything in beforehand, uh, got the TIFO laid out at the bottom, get back to the tailgate and, you know, the whole time I'm just like, okay, I, we need to get ready. We need to get ready. Everybody else is like drinking beers. I'm like, we need to get ready. We need to get ready. We're going to do it just like, just like all professional teams. Uh, at the end of the national anthem in the home of the brave, as soon as you hear brave, Start sending that thing up. And I have never yelled so loud when it was three, two, one. Ball! Blew out my blew out my voice for the rest of the match. And then you see it start coming up, and the people that are underneath it, some people don't know what is going on because they weren't there for any of this. They're just intersection. Just seeing everybody just shaking it like crazy. And I'm like, ah, don't shake the tempo. And you see it on camera for the first time, it's like, yeah, <laughs> yes, yes. Just like everybody underneath had the biggest smiles on their faces. Um, I think as supporters, the artistic side of it and being able to express yourselves artistically through the supporter group is a really big thing for a lot of us. And so that moment for the leadership and probably for everybody in the stadium, it was really like a standout moment of the game, right? The game was a good game, but if you go to the beginning of it and everything that took place before it, and then during the game in the stands, I think that we created an atmosphere that people want to continue to come to. And that was a bit like the, the real like kickoff. I it was a bit emotionally torn um, being away from the whole experience, not being able to be there. But it was definitely an odd situation trying to watch it on an iPad inside of a, a hotel room in Salinas. And, and watching this team that, you know, we, uh, my, my daughter was sitting off in her little play area that we had brought along with her and um, I was sitting on a hotel room bed um, trying not to throw my iPad across the room when they scored the first goal on us and then, you know, not long after that celebrating Charlie's goal and really, really thought to myself we were going to pull it out, that we were going to win that game. Um, although we might not have deserved it on the day, uh, I really thought we were going to find a way to pull it out and I wanted them to pull it out because I knew that the supporters group specifically and the people that were in the stands that night would love that, that idea and that storyline of, of going down but coming back because that was kind of the running theme of everything that goes on soccer related in, in San Diego unless you're a soccer fan. Um, we've been down but we're coming back. Um, we ended with a draw. It was probably a fair result on the night, um, but it was nice. It was nice to be able to know that I could see my team play. It's, it was my team. I was on the other side of California, really, and yet there I was watching my team play um, and seeing all those people in the crowd and in the stands um, that I recognized and, you know, grabbing my wife whenever you could see Steve or whenever you could see Jerry and his kid and when you could see Drew, when you could see Paul Naku, all of those guys 
it, it was weird to be able to pick out all those people and knowing that traditionally I was, I should have been right there with him, but, um, don't regret it at all. Um, I wish they had done it the next weekend and not that weekend, but you know, that's, that's life. Um, I have my own experience tied to our first game as a team and, um, like I said, I, I couldn't imagine being in a different place. And then from there, just moments. I mean, little moments that you look at each other, like Jerry had his son, he was holding his son, and I just remember looking at him like, here we go. To me, that was definitely my favorite moment of March 7th, is being able to share that moment with him and knowing that that was a family that he was gonna, you know, looking back and looking at all the people and, and knowing that that was a family that he was gonna eventually grow into and say, you know, this is, this, is, this is my family. I'm a part of this crazy group of people that lose their voices every other weekend or whatever it is for their, for their club. Um, and and that, was, that was really an important moment, I think, for me. Those like little moments where the, the players come over and they, you know, they, they clap at us and they point and they point at us, like those matter so much to me as a, as a supporter because it means that they see us and they hear us and they appreciate our work and the amount of work that we did to get ready for that entire experience, right? And it was the whole section. Going into that first match, I felt like, wow, this is a lot that the locals have accomplished going into this um, with, you know, the whole pregame and um, just the level of organization that, that leadership had put in and everybody assisting was just like, wow, this is amazing and I, I couldn't be more proud. And then, you know, we raised that first TIFO and it was just like, oh. <laughs> yes, you, you have to be there. Um, uh, my sister had some friends come that, uh, and uh, one of them had never been to a, a soccer match before. And after the match just said, you know, I want this all the time. I want this direct, directly into my veins. And uh, I said, yeah, like me too. Um, I didn't know it could be this good. And it's something that, you know, I'll forever treasure. Um, and at the end of the game, uh, I remember going over to Drew and over to Jerry and just like putting my arm around him and just like looking up and saying like, look, like, look at what we did. Like, look at, look at what we did. This was six months of like super hard work. And here we are. And look, at everybody waving our scarves and everybody waving these flags and everybody singing these songs. Like, we're all here for a purpose and we did this. Like, we facilitated this work as a group. Um, and seeing, like, Jason and Sean and, and Eileen and everybody that was kind of there in those moments. Um, it's just, like, looks. It's, like, winks. It's, like, smiles. It's, like, smirks. It's these, like, little, little things that, like, really stick in your mind. Um, but then even after, after the players moved on, um, I remember Landon followed, and Landon was wearing our scarf, which was the first game of the year that he wore our scarf uh, for, and he ended up doing that throughout the season. But that meant, like, to me, that, like, hit me, like, right in my heart. I was like, that's, that's amazing. Like, that is really cool. And I had just given him the scarf at the beginning, you know, for the, when I gave him the letter in the locker room, um, for, and then for him to wear it out and wear it through the game, that meant a lot to me. But I remember I was in the front row waving a flag, um, training the guys on, and he looked right at me. And he looked at me and he smiled and he went like this for my baby. And he looked right at me and he, and he just said like, he just like gave me a big thumbs up. But like that was, that was like probably the moment that I remember the most. And uh, I say it meant the most to me throughout everything because it meant that the journey that we had been through together and like kind of the friendship that we've developed and also how much work we've both put in to build that exact moment and that exact game day experience. Um, that that hits like right at home. Like that was that was really really cool.